Oh, oh. <laughs> Holy cow. That's four and a half. This is the only time that a batted ball has hit the warehouse at Camden Yards in an organized function. Traveling 465 feet from home plate over Utah Street and into history. The site of impact is marked with a special plaque because nobody has done it before, since or after. Not in a game. Not many have even come close. In a world where balls fly into rivers, clear out of stadiums, and hit the roofs of domes, the building has stood tall and laughed at all of its challengers. Let's take a journey deep into one of baseball's most iconic landmarks and uncover the mystery of why nobody can hit the warehouse at Camden Yards. And that's coming up right after this. This is the B&O Warehouse, which was completed by the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad. Yeah, that's not just a Monopoly card in 1905. The all-brick building is eight stories high, 1,116 feet long, and has over 430,000 square feet of floor space. Yeah, it's friggin' big. The large warehouse thrived in the early 1900s and was in use until the early 70s when trucking and single floor warehouses made the building obsolete. It sat mostly vacant for 20 years until Camden Yards was opened in 1992 and the B&O Warehouse was launched into baseball lore. The behemoth of a building now houses team offices, private team clubs, and even serves as a wedding venue. To say it's breathtaking in person is an understatement. The warehouse is a mere 425 feet from home plate down the right field line and extends in a straight line to 615 feet in dead center. It's 120 feet high and about 35% of it is in fair ground, though realistically the hittable area of the warehouse is this section to the right of the scoreboard, which is about one-fifth of the building, giving hitters 26,000 beautiful square feet of target area, with most of it located in the right field power alley. It's big, it's bad, and it doesn't give hitters an inch. Why is such a large, tantalizingly close and perfectly placed target so unhittable? Let's meet the people trying to do just that. Baseball players get paid a lot of money to hit a ball very, very far. They hone their craft, dial into the pitcher, and let it rip. Unfortunately, their first goal is to hit it over just one fence, not hit it off a brick-faced logistics center. Let's look at what it would take to hit that warehouse. The estimated longest home run in MLB history is 575 feet, and that's for a Babe Ruth shot in 1921. So the data on that is more sus than China's COVID count, still doable. The important thing is that hitting the warehouse is quite possible. In fact, I'm still shocked it hasn't happened. To hit bricks, the batter is gonna need three things, exit velo, launch angle, and ultimately distance. And just because you have the first two doesn't mean you get number three, as factors on that day will play a huge part as to whether the ball flies far enough. I went and looked for which Davids came the closest, and I found these three. Jay Gibbons tagged one in July of 2003 and had an excellent shot. It was right down the line and it looked like it would make it, but oh, it only went 420 feet. Maybe the ball was just too high. Smoke weed every day. Lance Berkman came extra close in 2008, but this shot was only 430 feet, and that warehouse is a real bastard. And finally, Chris Davis hit one in 2015, and though the camera work sucked, after looking at it frame by frame, you can see it fell short and just bounced. This is pretty much it for your Davids. Not even close, really, because the Goliath is much more clever than we think. I said it's possible to hit the warehouse, but what does data have to say about that? The biggest part of the mystery is that even though huge home runs to right field get hit all over the league, why do they not happen in Camden Yards? I decided to take that out of the equation though and use math to find out which home runs in the StatCast era that had they been hit in Baltimore would have gotten scuffed. And the answer is surprisingly a lot. Since 2015, when StatCast began tracking dinger distance, 248 balls have traveled the right amount of distance to hit the warehouse. Yeah, you heard that right. If we take that as a sample size and extrapolate that for the entire life of Camden Yards, you can make an educated guess that over 1,000 home runs have been hit that if they had occurred in Baltimore, would have hit the warehouse. And all of these are lefties hitting in the target zone. 
Mind-blowing, right? 1,000 bites at the Apple, yet not a single one happened in Baltimore. That is amazing data. Let's look at two in particular I found. Here's Kyle Schwarber just absolutely ripping a Grand Slam in Milwaukee. 505 feet. This had a launch angle of 23 degrees and an exit velocity of 113 miles per hour likely would have hit the warehouse. And next there is this absolute moonshot by Nomar Mazara. This one left the yard at 110 miles an hour at an even higher launch angle, 25 degrees, and also traveled an estimated 505 feet. That would have smacked the shit out of the warehouse. But alas, we could watch all the coulda bins on this list all day, but there are major factors as to why the warehouse hasn't been hit and why. It won't ever be. I wish I could pin this on one thing as the reason why, however, there are a lot of factors. Let's start with an obvious one. The Orioles suck. You would think that the ideal person to hit the warehouse would be wearing black and orange. Unfortunately, they just haven't had a slew of big left-handed bats. Boog Powell played before the park was built. Rafi Palmero played there, but even with the roids and Viagra couldn't hit the warehouse. Chris Davis, we'll get back to him, fell off the map hard. If you look at the best lefty power hitters that have hit the most eligible warehouse blasts in the league, none of them are Orioles. Kyle Schwarber has hit nine theoretical blasts. Joey Gallo, six. Ronet Odor, also nine. Nomar Mazara, six. Bryce Harper, also six. Chris Davis during his career, two. I also said 248 home runs were eligible, but that number is a little deceptive. Just because a ball went far doesn't mean it would have hit the warehouse. These home runs were sorted on just distance. Like I said, launch angle and exit velocity play a factor. And when you start to take those into the equation, that 248 figure drops way down. You need a high launch angle and a high exit velocity because the warehouse is so far away and vertical. StatCast shows that balls with an exit velo over 110 miles an hour and a launch angle of over 20 degrees at only 13 eligible balls. I think there is a sweet spot, 113 miles an hour at 29 degrees, but only five of those balls in the StatCast era have ever been hit. So the pool of eligible home runs that could have hit the warehouse narrows. And I have even worse news. Let's look at three balls that were actually hit at Camden Yards that distance-wise should have hit the warehouse. The first is by Jonathan VR in 2018. The ball is going to travel 430 feet right over the big wall and right. It bounces short. The launch angle was 32 degrees, but exit velo only 103. Too high. The next is Ryan Flaherty. He crushes one 446 feet into the right field alley. It bounces short, close, but no cigar. 107.3, 31 degrees. Finally, Chris Davis, 110 miles an hour, 32 degrees, 438 feet short of the warehouse. What are we missing here? Plotting these home runs should have had them hitting the warehouse square. The answer is the warehouse is really fucking far away. In fact, much farther than a linear measurement. It's not at the same level as home plate. In fact, it's elevated up about 30 feet. Oh, guess what? Goliath here doesn't want you hitting it in the feet with the ball either, making the target area higher, farther, and much more unattainable than we previously thought. Look at this shot of Utah Street where the force perspective is removed. The warehouse is really, really far away. The ideal factors for a home run simply require so many things to go right that it's not just a matter of distance. You're gonna need a superhuman player, a day with perfect conditions, a pitcher tossing cookies like a freshman at their first frat party, and an exit velo of about 115 miles an hour and a launch angle between 25 and 29 degrees, which has only happened a handful of times in the last five years. All of this at Camden Yards. So to this day, Goliath keeps winning and Ken Griffey Jr. is the only David to hit it, though even though he says it doesn't really count, his plaque remains. Well, until the Orioles sign Kyle Schwarber. <laughs> like, that'll happen. They're still paying Chris Davis not to play for them. Well, I hope you enjoyed this film. Please subscribe for more nerdy stats and terrible jokes. I'm Five Points Vids, and you made it to my next video.